All right, folks, this is Dave Lytle back with his son. We're going to be going over this very interesting binocular. It's the Soviet design uh, comms by Geish BPO. Uh, B is for binocular, as I understand it. Uh, the P is for Poro, and the O, I do not understand the word for it, but it basically signifies that it's supposed to give eye relief uh, appropriate for using a gas mask, and that's why I'm interested in it. Not for the gas mask, but because of these things. I always have trouble uh, with having to have these glasses on for my stigmatism, and I need something that's going to give me the eye relief that I need. I already have tons of 7x50s. I love 7x50, very stable. Uh, but I figured, you know, if I want to push it and uh, get 10 power, I've looked through tons of 10x50s. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, 10x50 is a, it's a good setup. But uh, I haven't found any 10x50s out there that are going to give me a beautiful flat field. They're going to give me uh, super, super sharpness out to practically the edge of the field. And that's what I was told these would give me. Couldn't find them at a gun show. Can't find them on the shelf in any store. Uh, had to take the chance and uh, pick them up off of eBay. And there's a reason why I did that. It really started with uh, a program on YouTube that you can watch. It's very relaxing, by the way. Uh, it's Black Forest Recon. You just got a gentleman. You never see his face, but you always see his hands and some gloves picking up old vintage pieces and looking through them uh, up in the mountains in Germany. It's beautiful, very relaxing, but also educational. If you're really paying attention, you can see in advance kind of what you might be getting. And when he showed these off, I saw what I might be getting, and it looked interesting. Not only that, the whole binocular looked interesting. It really had, to me, uh, a rather masculine uh, look. I, I really appreciated it. I really liked the armor on it because it's not some kind of uh, glued on skin that you have to peel off to get to anything and then you have to re-glue it and it remains out of shape forever. Instead, they're two piece affairs that simply get pinned in place. Uh, very clever, and I was thinking, man, those Russians, they sure come up with some uh, rather robust, interesting stuff. Uh, I wonder how the thing performs. So I started to look for any kind of review I could find. Nothing on YouTube that I found uh, of any value. It would just take me right back to Black Forest Recon, and that's nothing but birds chirping. Uh, so I figured, you know, uh, I, I need to get some kind of dope on these. I knew that they had the eye relief, uh, but I did not know anything about whether or not they really performed. I eventually found an article uh, by Dr. Holger Merlitz, and he had some very interesting things to say about this thing. Uh, under optical performance, image sharpness, I got it right here. He says, the Baigish 10x42 is by far superior, not only in its, to its competitors, but to any binocular of this price class, except for its little 7x30 brother, which we've got, and we're going to be doing a separate review on that one. The star test delivers point-like stars over more than 90% radial of the field, and even at the edge, their distortion remains low. In fact, such an outcome is rarely found in binoculars of any price class, and the reward for its extremely sophisticated ocular construction containing as many as seven lens elements. These oculars uh, with those seven lens elements uh, are supposed to give you an uh, incredibly nice, flat, wide, well, I wouldn't say wide. It's not an extremely wide. Let's forget that. Here's another thing he's got to say. BPO 10x42 Bagish is an instrument with enormous potential. Its image sharpness is second to none, not only in its price class, but even when compared 
to any of the upper middle class. So that set the hook in me. And I figured, you know, let's uh, take a chance, spend the money, and see what we get. What I got was a binocular that is as tough as it looked. I also got a binocular that had these eye cups that uh, my son is able to get a, a perfect view through, but he's not wearing glasses, and I am. And I decided, well, I'll roll them down, which is very difficult. It's very thick rubber. Um, but still not enough. Still couldn't see the edge. But you know what? They will come off, and they have the built-in ridges to where they can just be placed right back on, and they'll stay on. They're not going to pop off by accident. Um, with this setup, even though I would prefer some rubber between my glass and the binocular at least it's not glass to glass and I don't have to worry about uh, abrading my uh, eye lenses when I have this set up as such and I look at the trees or whatever I have what I would say is one of the sharpest finest views that I've seen through any binocular period and it holds together practically right out to the edge, just as advertised. Um, very pleasant. Uh, it does have that uh, yellowish, greenish look to it, uh, because evidently there's one element uh, on each side that they chose because if they used the normal glass that would be used there, uh, if it's exposed to radiation, uh, this is just what I've researched and found out, uh, it will actually turn opaque. It, it'll, it'll go black on you. You do have color. It's not going to give you natural color, but what I've also found is that it's doing pretty much what many binoculars do when they give you filters uh, that make everything stand out. Uh, I have absolutely no trouble seeing anything with this thing. The focusers are extra large and very, very fine. They, they're quite quick, which I normally don't like. I don't like a binocular that uh, very minute movement will bring you to focus because very often it just takes me right out of focus. But these are so large, uh, I actually am able to maneuver them and get right onto focus and just stop. Uh, very nice. I did add a little bit of damping grease to them uh, because they spun, I thought, too freely. And maybe I made a mistake. Uh, my son uh, correctly pointed out that these things are designed for radical temperature variation and uh, possibly how they were set up was to allow for expansion and contraction of metals and the grease that was already in them. Evidently, these things were supposed to work from minus 40 C to plus 50. And that, uh, that kind of makes sense if you're going to have this out uh, in Siberia with the Russian army. Uh, I would imagine you'd have no trouble on a regular hunt with these other than the fact that they're a bit on the heavy side. They're heavy but they also hang well. Um, they just seem to just sit and they don't bobble around like uh, binoculars that are a bit on the light side. It's a, it's a nice system with uh, an excellent view but how excellent is it? That's what we had to find out and we had to have some basis of comparison these things cost, you know, nowadays you get one, you know, you can find them used for anywhere upwards of 300 or more. Um, I haven't even found any new ones. They seem to have been snapped up. If you're going to be spending that kind of money, you know, why wouldn't you be spending it on a, a brand new roof prism? Yeah, after all, you get a warranty with that. You got, uh, you know, generally a waterproof system. You have ED lenses. You don't have them on this. You have 
all sorts of advantages, including the modern multi coatings. So I would imagine that uh, with one of these, you should be able to get something in the same price range uh, that should outperform it. And if it does that, then practically the only reason you'd have this is just for the uniqueness of them. Well, my son and I wanted to find out if that was so. So we had to compare them to other 10 by 42s. So what we did was we used this 10 by 50 roof prism that I picked up from China. Uh, it's got the ED lenses. It's got all the bells and whistles, uh, dielectric coating, uh, phase correction, all that lovely stuff. Uh, and they're incredibly bright and rather sharp. So I wanted to know how will these compare to something that would be in the same price range. We got in the car, we went to Dick's Sporting Goods, and the gentleman there was very nice to allow us to do some testing right there in the store uh, with what he had available in 10 by 42 That was... Uh, Nikon Monarch 5 and also he had a Vortex Viper which was a bit more expensive. We're talking uh, a binocular with the Monarch that was 300 there and for the Viper that was 500. We sat down and started doing our testing across the store at what turned out to be 66 yards across that store to some boxes that we had piled against the wall with different size writing on them. And what we came up with was that, and this is for you guys, this is a, a, another extra review for free, uh, the Monarch 5 outperformed the Vortex in, for both my son and myself uh, the Vortex had a wider field, that was nice, but it didn't pan out for me with my glasses on so much. It was kind of a moot issue. They came out practically about the same. Uh, my son definitely was of the opinion that the Monarch 5 uh, was superior to the uh, Chinese built uh, 10 by 50s but not by much, not enough to be significant. Personally, I wasn't able to see a difference between them. I will acknowledge that the Monarch 5 probably has the better glass, being that it's 42 millimeter and that was being compared to a 50 millimeter. The 50 should be able to give you uh, slightly higher resolution, all things remaining the same because of the size. Nonetheless, as far as being able to make out detail at that range, they were pretty pretty much neck and neck. Really couldn't come up with any real difference. So we left pretty sure that we had a fair basis of comparison using these 10 by 50s. Come nighttime, we set up our 1951 US Air Force target at 60 yards and proceeded to do testing as the sun was going down. And at a point where we could no longer make out anything, that's where we stopped. And the Chinese 10 by 50 allowed us at the very end to be able to make out uh, group negative two, element two. You could just kind of, sort of make out element three below it, uh, but really not quite. With these compared right next to it, we were able to make out element four clearly and actually you could it would pop in and out but at that time of the night I was actually able to make out that we had uh, five and six as well 
I, I be honest and say that four was the one that just absolutely stood out clearly, but five and six would phase in and out and uh, basically I was able to see everything. So for a practical, uh, like I was on a hunt or something, uh, these things uh, definitely would have outperformed the Monarch 5 for resolution. Uh, they would have outperformed the Vortex Viper, uh, which was, you know, $200 greater cost. And some people will pay even more for that, depending on what store you go to. So, yes, I would have to say that if you're interested in a bizarre design uh, that's going to give you just amazing sharpness, uh, ease of use, focusers are very nice, um, and let you see clear from one side to the other practically, you know, maybe about uh, the last 10% of the field you started to get a bit of roll off but even then it wasn't horrid um, these are uh, truly a interesting binocular and I don't think that if you pick these up if you can even find them that you're really going to get beaten up in any way as far as the performance is concerned um, yeah Thumbs up on these.